please can I welcome to the stage our esteemed guests, Gavin Myers and Jacob Diggle. Thank you. OK, so we're going to now hear from our esteemed colleagues um, that will be talking to you about the social and economic value of youth work. This feels like something that's really important and significant for all of us to consider in our work influencing and trying to shape policy decisions that will support and further the goals of youth work for our young people um, in our home countries and also the work that we do collaboratively. So we're going to begin with um, hearing from our colleague Jacob, who will present some work from his organisation. And then we'll hear from our colleague Gavin um, and then post that there'll be the opportunity for some questions from the audience. I am aware that we're running over time because of our technological issues this morning and also to make sure that we gave due respect to our colleague. But don't worry, we'll catch it back up as we as we move on through the day. So, OK, over to you then, Jacob. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. We really do stand on the shoulders of giants. I'm here today in a room full of people doing the real work, changing policy, changing the conversation, changing the lives of the young people that we're standing shoulder to shoulder with, building on the incredible legacy that we've just heard uh, discussed and looking for the future to try and make the lives of the next generations a bit easier. What I offer today is a humble contribution <laughs> to that and hopefully we'll be raising some more questions, but hopefully some answers. It's a classic researcher challenge. Uh, my ultimate conclusion today will be, and there's some more questions to answer, but I hope that in talking a bit about the research that we've done into the economic impact of youth work, uh, we help to move the conversation forward a little. I'm really acutely aware that the topic of the economic impact of youth work, I can see at least half the room's eyes have glazed over. Some of you are worried that this is gonna be a very dry talk about econometrics. Some of you are quite excited, this might be quite a dry talk about econometrics. Um, and a lot of you are thinking, I don't care. I don't get out of bed to deliver value to the taxpayer. I get out of bed to support young people and change their lives. I understand. I'm not motivated by the spreadsheets either. But I think it's really important that when we think about youth work and youth development, we start with where young people are and what is most important to them. And we orientate ourselves around them and those priorities. We also operate in a world where young people's priorities are often very low down the list. And other things are front of mind for those with power and privilege and resources. And so it's important that we also orientate ourselves to them and their understanding and to try and tell our story in a way that they understand. Because if we keep telling our story on our own terms, a lot of people haven't been listening. So what I'm about to say in terms of the economic impact of youth work and the research that we've done there doesn't change the value set that we're using doesn't change the motivations that we find for doing the work, but it's hopefully a way of trying to articulate what we do, the value that we bring, the contribution that we make in a way that might perk the ears of some people who previously weren't listening. Uh, I am uh, very privileged to work for an organization called UK Youth. Uh, we work with 8,000 community youth organizations uh, across the UK, uh, and we do a lot of work around research and policy, uh, developing different kinds of practice, testing that in different environments, trying to support the amazing work that's done across communities. We believe that young people deserve support. It's an incredibly challenging time to grow up and try and find your place in the world. It's frankly a really challenging time for any of us just to live in the world. And I think we could all do with a youth worker, someone who's there to help us uh, navigate these difficult challenges and to figure out how do we, how do we approach the, the storm in a way that feels true to us and our values and our beliefs and find our place in the world. Young people need that more than ever. And we think youth work has an absolutely critical role to play in helping young people navigate those challenges. But we also don't have a monopoly of care about young people. There are health professionals, there are formal education teachers, there are people working in the criminal justice system. There are a lot of people who also care about young people. 
And it's important that when we're trying to uh, think about how best to expand the reach and impact of our work, that we think about those people as allies, not competitors. I have to admit that I've been in many rooms talking about and grumbling about, sometimes not in very polite terms, about the disparities of funding flows to different agencies, to get frustrated about the lack of mutual trust and respect between professionals, the fact that youth work gets seen as supervised play rather than youth development. But if we pretend that we have a monopoly over the answer, we keep letting young people down. And it's important, and we believe at UK Youth, that the way to change the current reality of support for young people is by joining up our care, is by working together to orientate ourselves around the young people rather than making them navigate their way between different agencies and lives. And a key driver for us in this particular piece of research, looking at the economic impact of youth work, was understanding what impact is youth work playing in these other spaces, uh, on these other agendas, on these other things that other services and systems care about, so that we can start having a conversation based on mutual understanding and respect rather than a shouting match about who should be taken seriously next. One of the big caveats I'm going to talk about uh, in terms of our findings, I am not in this research drawing any, uh, any favourites. I'm not comparing any type of youth work practice to another. What we've looked at uh, through this research is all types of youth work practice, whether that's detached work, centre-based work, project-based work, we are not comparing different types of youth work to one another. We're looking at uh, the, the full totality um, of youth work. We worked with a partner organization called Frontier Economics, um, and this was really important to us. We bring the expertise around youth work uh, and much of the, um, uh, the understanding of previous research, but we needed to work with an agency uh, who had existing technical skill uh, in econ econometrics and modeling, but also most importantly, was a trusted partner of government already. We didn't want this to be a puff piece. We didn't want this to be an argument uh, that was just a polemic. We really wanted to try and make the toughest possible case for ourselves. We tried to answer these four quite fundamental questions uh, about youth work, and I'm talking here about England specifically. We at UK Youth operate UK wide. We've got partners over the, um, across the whole island of Ireland, but because of particular data challenges, I talk about this in England, but I can, if there are questions, we can draw out the relevance elsewhere. The first question seems quite basic, but what, what resources are actually being spent to deliver youth work? Actually, how much money do we have? How much resource do we have, really? There are 8,000 community organisations delivering youth work across the UK, and it's quite a messy picture. We also asked, what are the direct economic impacts of that work? What is the uh, impact of paying people's salaries so they can go to the supermarket and buy goods? The ripple effect that we sometimes don't take into account when we think about youth work's impact, right? When you get a new minibus, when you renovate your youth centre, you're employing people, you're buying goods and services. That is a really important contribution that we're making. We also asked, what is the indirect economic impact of youth work? What is the economic value of the social returns uh, that are being provided, the impact, the positive impact we're having on young people's lives? And what does that mean, then mean for the return on investment for government spending? For every pound the government invests into youth work, what is the broader benefit to the economy? And in the spirit of humility, what else do we need to know? Because we know there are loads of gaps. But if we keep saying we need to strengthen the impact uh, evidence base for youth work, that doesn't tell us much about how to target our work going forward. So we wanted to, to tailor that. This uh, brief video to see if it works uh, sh uh, does uh, share some of our key conclusions. I don't know about you, but if anyone offered to triple my money, 
uh, I think it was a scam. Uh, we've got a pretty, uh, we've got a pretty good strong case to make. I just want to draw out a little bit more about uh, some of the detail of those findings. In terms of the resource flow, some of you will be more familiar with the context than others, but within the UK uh, and within England specifically, which is what these figures relate to, we sometimes uh, hide our own light under a bushel. Uh, there is an extraordinary amount of time, effort and resource put in place to support young people through youth work. There are four million young people who are being supported every day uh, through youth work. Not all of it good enough, but four million young people being supported with that life changing support. There are 70,000 paid staff uh, and hundreds of thousands of volunteers uh, committing their lives to supporting young people. And there's billions of pounds being spent on this work, nowhere near enough. But there are billions of pounds that we're playing with here, not all of it being spent very well. Um, and I think it's important that we understand the scale uh, of what we're talking about here. That has a ripple effect on the broader economy. When you pay uh, someone salaries and they go to the shops, when you buy your minibus, when someone vo volunteers and donates their time, all of this has a value. It's not necessarily why someone volunteers to deliver value to the economy, but it has a real impact uh, and we should take it really seriously. The combined just direct economic impact of youth work is billions of pounds every year, more than the actual resources uh, that are taken uh, to fund it. Importantly though, this return, the direct economic impact, could be delivered by other services. If you invested that two, million, that two billion pounds into the formal education system, you'd also be paying teachers' salaries. You'd also be uh, buying resources for schools. So it's not, it's not a unique monopoly that we have, um, but it is a positive impact that we're having. Where we start getting to the unique contribution, the unique value of youth work is when we talk about the social returns on investment. Um, we will know in our, in our different practice in our different contexts, the life changing work that youth work can have. And we've come a really long way in recent years uh, in being able to evidence the impact of this. We can talk about various different outcome studies. I can talk about the, st the studies that underpin this uh, if possible uh, uh, in your questions or, or later uh, in the networking. We've also got some really exciting new research that's been funded by the UK government uh, due to publish later on this month, which is looking at the long term impact of youth work. So much of our evidence looked at three or six or 12 months time, but we say we're setting young people up for life. We should be thinking about what is that long term impact? And we've been doing a study looking at some big longitudinal studies. So basically following uh, young people from birth through into adulthood. We have got some new uh, findings due out in just a few weeks time that look at the impact of if you took part in youth work as a teenager, what is the impact on your health, your education, your employment outcomes, your, your mental health and well-being in your 20s and 30s? Um, I am under legal restrictions about what I can say, but I am smiling. <laughs> Uh, so uh, watch out for that uh, research uh, coming out really soon. But based on just the evidence that already exists, we've done some calculations to look at what is the economic return uh, of these positive outcomes in these areas. And like I say, I don't get out of bed to deliver value to a taxpayer. I'm also someone who has personally experienced the life-changing benefits of youth work. As a teenager, I was incredibly lonely and depressed. And it was two youth workers who convinced me that I had any value and worth at all. <laughs> who frankly would have fallen off their foldable chairs to see me here talking to you today. I have experienced that life-changing power of youth work and I'm committed to doing everything I can to try and make sure that more young people get access to that. When we look at the economic value of youth work, we've split down to three main areas. These are not necessarily the areas where youth work has the biggest impact, but they are the areas that have got the biggest evidence base. We've looked at youth work's impact on uh, decreasing crime, on improving health and, and particularly about mental health, uh, and also uh, in improving educational and employment outcomes. Within these, there are studies that have looked at different elements of youth work practice, whether that's around uh, antisocial behavior, for example, or around knife crime uh, in a UK context, whether that's about improving impacts uh, on positive mental health, reducing the need for specialist mental health services and support, um, but also uh, impacts of youth work on, for example, reducing obesity. We've also looked at uh, the impact of youth work on avoiding young people uh, uh, dropping out of education and employment entirely. Uh, and the economic benefits of this come in multiple ways. They might be because we are having to spend less money delivering other specialist support services to pick up the pieces. It might be because a young person is 
securing, secure and fulfilling work, paying taxes, contributing uh, to the broader economy. And so these numbers all, all add up and they get to very large figures. Um, overall, and this is where I crane my neck to see the screen behind me, um, the social return um, of youth work uh, is in almost four billion pounds a year, um, which is just beyond the, the direct money that's taken to um, pay for it. What that boils down to is a return on investment. And again, we tried to make the hardest possible case for ourselves. We spoke to the UK government and said, can you tot up all of the money that you're spending, please? And can you tell us how much it is? And they said, no, we don't know. We said, maybe that's a problem. Maybe you should work on that. But in the meantime, we'll do that for you. Maybe that indicates that you're not taking this very seriously. We looked high and low at every uh, budget paper down the back of every sofa to try and find every pound of money they were spending. Uh, and we could find about half a billion pounds a year worth of UK government funding for youth work. We then said, we'll be really generous to you and pretend it's double because I'm sure there's other stuff that you're doing out there that you just can't find. I'm sure there's loads that's labeled something else. Let's be really generous. Let's assume you're doing twice as much as you actually are. Still, let's see if we're giving you a positive return. We found just on the social return on investment that the value for money for the UK taxpayer for every pound they are spending is at least £3.20 back. And actually, if we weren't quite so generous to the government, it would be about £6.40 back at least. And that's just on the outcomes that we've been able to evidence directly. There's a lot of other positive impacts, whether that's on citizenship or peace building, uh, that we uh, haven't uh, included in this because the studies haven't been done uh, sufficiently rigorously. And we try to make conservative assumptions wherever we are. Again, I'm not going to get into all the dry detail, but I love the dry detail. Uh, so uh, please do come and find me afterwards. So just in conclusion, I think it's really important that we that we do walk tall. Sometimes we can carry this burden that we're doing great stuff, but we just can't prove it. Actually, we're sitting on quite a lot of uh, very strong evidence already. It could definitely be stronger. Uh, and we at UK Youth are, are working really hard to try and fill those gaps. But we're, but we're not without evidence and proof. It's amazing that 100 years of practice um, has actually uh, taught us some things. So we should feel confident about that. We should also feel confident speaking in the terms of the policymakers who are making decisions uh, and are holding the purse strings. But one of the most important findings I take from this is the economic impact of youth work, particularly those social returns on investment, are in large part impacts in positive spaces that other professionals and allied sectors are working on too. They're about employment education, they're around mental health and, and physical health, they're around criminal justice. We sometimes are making the argument for our own youth work and youth development pots on their own. <laughs> rather than tapping into these broader systems and saying, let me work with you. And also, rather than you reinventing my youth work wheel, maybe pay my one to get fixed. Um, I, before working for UK Youth, I was working for a, a major mental health charity in the UK. And I was doing a research project with young people where we were trying to design from scratch what a better mental health system would look for, like for them, rather than just doing incremental changes on a broken system. What we ended up doing was reinventing youth work. Young people said, I want an adult who's not my parent, who's not a teacher, who cares about me. I want someone who sees me as a person, not a problem. I want someone who doesn't panic when I tell them how I really feel. I was like, hang on, this sounds very familiar. Maybe we should go about re-energizing uh, re and unlocking youth work rather than getting other systems to try and reinvent that wheel. Those of you in the UK policy context will have heard about community link workers or social prescribers for young people. We've already got systems in place for doing this. Let's talk really confidently and positively about the contribution we can be making in these sectors. But we've got to do it on their terms, about the outcomes that they're working for for young people, rather than just saying youth work, youth work, youth work. Let's say young people, young people, young people. Thanks. So I am a product of a youth worker in a different way. I used to give a, well, I still give a lot of trouble. But I, I now see one of the reasons why we need young, young youth workers generally, and I've always known it. Without youth workers, the social impact of not having youth work is very evident. I am going to age some of us by asking if anybody know when I said the phrase Amandla. Anybody know the response? Amandla. No, it sounds kind of slow now. Amandla. Okay. Now, if I say Hector Peterson, how much of us know 
who is Hector Peterson? Okay, exactly. We're talking about the power of youth. I'm also going to point out a negative power that youth also have. If I say Anders Brevik, anybody remember who Anders Brevik is? Again, another power of youth. And both are indicative of the social impact of youth workers and the space that youth workers occupy. The apartheid movement fell because of young people. Almost every social movement in history, slavery, every piece of it fell because of the work of youth. And the people who took part in this, who led, who fomented, who nurtured, who cared, who did paid, unpaid, formal, non-formal and informal youth work were people who were committed to understanding the, the emancipatory role that youth workers play. And it's critical that we speak about youth work and we look at the value that youth work plays when we know that one of the major values is something that we can barely find proxies to discuss. There's no proxy to explain why a young boy from a rural community in, I'm going to say, bush parts of Jamaica, bush, should be sitting in Reading speaking to you. There's no proxy to explain it. There's no proxy to explain how someone can use drama to speak to young people anywhere. And that's what youth work does. Youth work is this approach that we have an impact on the public health, we have an impact on the politics, we have an impact on the policies, we have an impact on the, the reach of young people. And it is in these ways we can speak about it. The majority of people who migrate are youth. And we've heard yesterday that young people have taken a decision that this home has, is no place for me and I'm leaving. And whether it's on a boat across the channel, whether it's on a boat across the Mediterranean, whether it's on the land bridge on the Central American space, whether it's on a boat across the Caribbean, whether it's across the Zambezi River, these young people are moving. There's a value to youth work that young people understand and they value through their lived experience. There's also a value that young people understand because of they know the absence, what the absence of youth work can do to their own life. And we as youth workers often are placed in this position as to do we work as per the formal structures and rules, or do we work for the people who matter? I have a friend, Miguel Stepper Williams, who says that he works for the people, but the government pays him. And a lot of us, we work for young people. We know that. We know that the reason why we wake up at 11 o'clock in the night to take a call from a young person is because they value the social impact of that call they value but we also know the economic value that is there is we, we speak about the cultural values the the value of teaching a young person about their heritage teaching a young person about their own value about protecting the environment about protecting this this is something that we have spoken about the research has spoken about there is research in community youth work in jamaica that says that for every dollar that youth workers in one institution gain, and they gain this through philanthropy, through every, different their social enterprise, they give a return of one dollar and eleven, one dollar and eleven cents on top of it. So that's what my math is very bad. So that's two dollars and eleven cents after the one dollar, right? A good person. Yeah. See with the people, I'm sorry. I'm not very great at the math thing. So yes, 
there's that type of return that is that is proven. There is also this part that we as youth workers are sometimes unable to voice, and we'll say it this way, maybe the only way you'll know the value of a youth worker is when they aren't youth workers in the community. And we can think of different spaces who have defunded or underfunded youth work, and we can see the rise in knife crimes. We can see the rise in different parts of antisocial behavior, the impact on public health, the impact on different behaviors, sexual and reproductive health, other aspects of life. We know that this is what young people are going to feel if it's absent. And part of the challenge, and I'm not thinking through discussions that would have had with Henry, part of the challenge that he knew and he spoke very clearly about is that if you do not have it, you will know the failures. And I think in trying to articulate the social value of youth work, we have to put ourselves in the space that if it's not there, what will happen? Do we want more Hector Petersons or do we want more Anders Breviks? And we are in this post-truth, post-fact, post-everything space where more young people know how to use a gun, how to find information, etc. Do we want them to learn more about how to seek peace and pursue it? Or do we want them to find their own way? I, for one, know I want them to seek peace and pursue it. And the value of a social worker is there. I leave with one example from my youth work past in Jamaica. I have a friend, Joanne. She was in her youth center, general conversation, and a young person came to her and said, Joanne, I want to talk to you. And she's like, calm down, I'll soon talk to you. And the young person came back again, Joanne, I want to talk to you. And she says, calm down, I'll speak to you again, man. Tomorrow, just calm down. 4 p.m., we, Joanne went to check on the young lady. And she wasn't to be found. 4.05 p.m., we got the message young lady had killed herself. I'm saying that quite possibly the value of youth work is exactly that. We do not want to see a world without youth workers. We do not want to see it because it is very sad. Thank you to both our panellists, Jacob on the social and economic value of youth work in the UK, specifically in England, and Gavin talking very eloquently with some concrete examples of the, the clear social value of youth work and what happens when it isn't part of our systems for young people. We are overrunning on time, so unfortunately I'm not going to open the floor to questions now, but you've heard clearly from our panellists here they are more than willing and open to discuss their, their thoughts and their views and their findings and their research, so please do catch them throughout the day. We're going to take a 15-minute refreshment break now, so there's drinks, teas, coffees, soft drinks, etc., out in the foyer. And then please post that. Can you make your way to your first workshop? So can you make your way to your first workshop at 10 to 11 after getting some refreshments? Thank you very much for your time. And thank you to all panelists and speakers today. Thank you.